prayers. We're going to be tremendously blessed. Would you mind standing on your feet one more time and just give your best welcome to Pastor Judy Shaw as she comes today. Hallelujah. Well, come on, keep clapping, and let's confer all the honor to him. Amen. You got to do better than that. You got to give God more than you give man. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we thank you for this time, this place, and this space you've given us to come together to hear from your heart, coming through my heart, directly into the heart of your people. I thank you, Father, that your word will fall into good ground today. I thank you that that seed of faith will germinate and cause great exploits to happen in our lives and that we can go forth and advance the kingdom of God. We're ready for you, Lord, today. And we thank you for the word that's coming, tailor-made, designed for today. We bless you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen, amen, and amen. 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 You may take your seats in the presence of God. Uh, good to be here. Um, Pastor Glenn, um, he's just a man, right? He's, 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 he's just a man. I praise God for him. And uh, Denise, his wife, hey, Denise, uh, and all of you that are here, uh, the armor bearers that are here and you that have come to uh, be a part of this great celebration service today. Uh, I was in the area, and I had already planned to come to my church. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of churches I can go to around here. I just want you to know, just in case you didn't know. But this is my church, amen? And so it didn't matter who was preaching, didn't matter. I was going to be here, and then he got wind of it, so now I'm here. But I do have a word of the Lord for you today. And I just bring you greetings from South Dakota, Sioux Falls, where God lives. God loves Sioux Falls, even though it's a little cool and cold right now. But um, the Spirit of the Lord is still there where he's called us to that geographical area for a base but able to do other things as we go forth. And it's always good to come to the New England states, especially to be here with you. I really mean it. I really love you guys. I really do. Yeah. We love you, Judy. Oh, yes, we do. No, I'm just kidding. The word of the Lord today um, comes from uh, a theme scripture, the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew. And uh, if you know it, if you don't know it, you've heard a little bit on the screen about what's happening tonight, starting tonight. Yeah. Very, yeah, you know, good. Very, very important time in God's history, in our history. And, and it, it's indicative to uh, what's going on in the world, but so much what this present message is today. And it didn't dawn on me that this was the Sunday evening that it starts. And that is the beginning of the 10-day preparation for our Jewish feast and so on. And prophetically, God's going to be saying some things that you may not have heard before. He's going to say some things again that he's already said. He's going to remind us of who he is and what he said and what's happening now, all right? So it's important to know what God is doing now and what God is saying now so that we can be a part of it now. Everybody else was a part of it in their generation. Our patriots and fathers and Esther and, and Paul and, and James and all of them, but they're gone and we're here. So we want to declare this generation and we want to hear what God is saying so we can do our part. Amen. How many are ready to do your part? I mean, we're ready to do our part. We're just not coming to church just to come to church. we like ready to do our part, Lord. Count me in. I said this morning, I don't want to be numbered. I want to be counted in. I just don't want to be numbered. I want to be counted in the work of the Lord. And God is always looking for those believers, those that will say, yes, uh, I'm ready to co-labor with you to do what you called me to do. We have a purpose to our lives. There's an assignment to all of our personal lives. If you have a name, if you're breathing right now, uh, you have an assignment before the foundation of the world. You have a, you have a God-given purpose, and it wasn't just your secular job. It wasn't just for you to be the wonderful husband you are to that beautiful lady right there. And it wasn't just for you to be the beautiful wife to that husband right there or the daughter or the son. But God purposed you in his plan to carry out what he has called you to do. It includes that, but it's not exclusive of that. You got that? 
So you got you you got you have your your careers, your secular careers, but you have your heavenly vision also. You've got your calling. You've been called by God. You've been appointed by God. You've been chosen for this generation, and God needs you, and God wants you, and God loves you. So the 16th chapter of the book of um, Matthew uh, gives an, a, a really an admonishment to us uh, as Jesus was asked, answering the question to the religious people, the scribes and the Pharisees in that day. And so, you know, church folks think they're smarter than God a lot of times. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about church folks. Yeah, sometimes you get, you know, sometimes that education goes to your head. Am I right about it? Sometimes education goes to your head. And that religious stuff goes to your head because it's not in your heart. But anyway, that's another story. The, the, the scribes and the Pharisees were asking Jesus a question, and this is what they said, 16th chapter of the book of Matthew. The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus, tested him. That was the first thing. You don't test God. You don't test Jesus, right? They tested Jesus uh, by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. You're, you're Jesus, show us a sign. You know, we're from Missouri, show me. You know, I need to see this thing, you know. You're saying you can do all this, but I want to see a sign. And, 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 and so they asked Jesus, Jesus replied, when the evening comes, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, Today it will be stormy, for the cloud is red and overcast. He said, you say that. You can discern that. He said, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot even interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous or unbelieving and an adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given because he's already given the sign, right? None shall be given except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left and went his way. Gotta see a sign. Jesus said, you're so smart. How many know that? Let me tell you, just in case you didn't know, you're smart people. Yeah, you're smart people. And if you're not smart, let me prophesy it over you. You're smart. <laughs> By faith, you're smart. <laughs> Receive it in Jesus' name. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Jesus was saying to them, you are smart, and you can discern things. There are natural indicators that gives an answer to something. Also, there are spiritual indicators in the earth. And he said, you got the natural indicators pretty much. You can look at the sky, and because of your education, because of the patterns of the weather, because of this and because of that, you can discern it. You can say, get the umbrella out tomorrow. It's going to rain. You can say, pull the shades down. Pull the, close the windows. It's getting ready to rain. You can discern that. But he says, you've not been able to discern my kingdom. But you can. But you've not been paying attention to my kingdom and what I'm doing. So I really just came to remind you today to, it's time really to pay attention to God's calendar. Especially on this day as we're entering into the feast of the, uh, the Jewish feast and so on because it's God's calendar. And I need to say to you that we can change appointments on our calendars and we can change uh, things on our calendar, but God's calendar does not change. Tomorrow, October 3rd, 2016, you are not going to be able to change what's coming down from heavens to the earth. You can change it. If it's a day for you to suffer, guess what? You're going to suffer. If it's the day for you to be blessed on God's calendar, you're going to be blessed. Whatever God has already, I'll say it again, already prepared is not going to change. So he's saying to us today, if the earth can tell the seasons, I was, uh, Tyler picked me up. Thank you for picking me up this morning, Tyler. And I was looking at the changing of the leaves. Nothing, no place in the whole country is like this area to me. When I come here down Waterbury, see the leaves, the foliage changing, beautiful colors. If the, if the plant kingdom can, can change when the season comes and they're not struggling, 
Is it winter time? Is it summertime? No, they know it automatically. The automatically, the elements know exactly what time and season it is. The soil right now is preparing for the winter. The soil is. The animals, there, you know. Somebody, I remember a, 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 um, a joke when I was coming up, one of my favorite jokes. It says, why do birds fly south? You don't know that? You know, I mean, the animals even know it's time to go south, right? Why do birds fly south? You don't know? Because it's too far to walk. <laughs> Come on, a little bit more, a little bit more laughter. <laughs> okay, I'll try, to, I'll try to do a little better. But listen, even the, the animal kingdom knows. They, they, they could begin to hide their food. They know the season is changing. So, so it, 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 it behooves us to get an understanding and to pay attention. And we really know this. You know, but, but like the scribes and the Pharisees, they can have a knowledge of it, but don't know what God is doing in that given time. So I want to say to you, smart people, <laughs> discern the times and discern what God wants you to do in his day at this time. I always say, I don't want to be where God was. I want to be where he is right now. I don't want to be what, what God used to do because he's not there. He's, he's not in the past. God's in the present. He's in the moment. He's in the moment, and it behooves us to know what God is saying for our lives. And so the, the message is not just corporate, but it's individual. I want you to know that there's a plan. There's an exact plan for your family. There's, 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 there's the next thing that you need to discern. Maybe you've been going straight, 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 straight for 10 years, but God says now is the time to make a left turn. But if you miss it, then you'll miss what God has for you because the calendar of God does not change. So he wants us to be aligned with his calendar and to discern it and to know it. And as we seek him, and as we ask him, as Proverbs says, everything in everything that we do to consult him, to honor him, to acknowledge him. Yes. Say, God, you know, don't present your agenda to him and say, bless it. <laughs> don't say, well, this is what I think for my life. You, our destiny is not determined, it's discovered. Because Jeremiah says, I've already written your life. I know the plans I have for you. And they're plans to give you a good end, a, an expected end, and I got you covered. You just got to follow my plan. You can't expect me to bless your plans if it's not in alignment with my plans. A lot of people say, well, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You know, and, and, and God's going to, uh, uh, he's going to, he's in, he's in control. He's only in control if we submit to his will. Yeah. yeah, he's only in control if we say, yes, Lord. He says, okay, come on with me. I got you. So timing, uh, discerning the time. Understanding what, what's next for you. What's up? What, what, what is God saying for you in 2016? Prophetically, he says something to the body. That's good. We can get under that umbrella because that's spiritual fulfillment. And then individually, he speaks to us. And then generationally, he speaks to us. And territorially, he speaks to us. And I believe that God's got some good plans for New England State. I believe that God's got some great plans for harvest time. I know you're in the will of God. And I know your families are blessed because you're right here, because you're doing what God has called you to do. So that's, that, that's really the message that I want to bring to you, to pay attention to God's timing. Don't just get up and do what you want to do and set your own agenda. Check in with headquarters. He's not only Savior, but is he Lord? Lord means he leads me. David says, you know, that, that he's the good shepherd. And he leads us. He leads me. He actually will lead you into green pastures. And I mean, he will lead you to where he wants you to go if we will pay attention. And inadvertently and unintentionally, we just get up in the morning and we just do what we do without checking in, without really getting a good understanding to make sure we're in alignment with the timing of God. Sometimes we can do a thing so long, 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 so long that we don't even think that it's time to change. We don't even think about it. 
but, 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 but God always calls new times and new seasons. And another, another good thing to pay attention to time is because he's ready to promote some of y'all. Promotion is over your head. It's time for your next. It's time for you to, to be a reward, to get your reward from being faithful. Come on, somebody. It's time for you to get your reward. And when it's time for your reward, it's not time to be praying, 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 and working, working, working. It's time to say, bring it on, Lord. Come on, it's my, it's my season. Come on. It's after you sold and 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 you sold. You just don't keep sowing until Jesus come. There's a reaping day. There's a reaping time. There is a fulfillment of what God has said, and he wants you to walk in it, enjoy it, and give him the glory. And come to church next Sunday saying, he's a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. And so this is what God is saying. He's like, you know, you, you can understand that it's a season. Uh, as Psalms 102, 13 says, it's the time to favor Zion because God is ready to show himself big and great and mighty. And so he has to have a people to bestow this blessing upon, a people to bestow this honor upon so he can say, look at my kids. So he can showcase you. Ooh, look at this. Look at this outside. That's, that's what you call a showcase right there. Show, you don't like it? I'm sorry. It's too bad. It's up already. That's what you call giving God the glory. That right there, that right there, that is going to say, they're going to say, who? How? What? How? All of that. And they're going to end up seeing the glory of God. Come on, somebody. And that's what you've been doing. You've discerned the time. You said, what's next? You know, we're always looking at what's next, what's next, what's next? And you walked into the treasure of God, into the plan of God, and you're going to be blessed for it. Your children's going to be blessed for it. I mean, I, I just need you to go all the way. Don't just, don't just do stuff. Ask and believe and desire. It's time to receive what God has, and that's the favor of God. It's always seed time and harvest. Amen. It's always seed time and harvest. And so, so he says, you know, he said, you got to get smart. And I want to say to the body of Christ, it's really time to get smart. It's time to, to, to embrace the timing of the Lord. It's time to, you know, change this and say, you know, God's ready to, to, to release the harvest. God's ready to do what he said he's going to do because that's the season that we're in. It's the season to, to co-labor with God, to do what he's called us to do, to advance the kingdom. But it's also a season of God's favor for you. After you have done the will of God, you have need of patience to receive the promise. Amen. You're still here. Now, that right there would have, could have caused many people to say, mm -mm, mm, you know what? I feel the Lord leading me to go to another church. I mean, that could have happened. But you're here. You know why? Because you understand how God works. And you do know that you don't cast away your confidence of what he said. Because there is a great recompense of reward. Isn't there? There's a, there's, a, there's, a great, there's, a, there's a great reward and there's a great blessing for doing what you've done. And, and, and right now, you just need to give yourself a hand clap. I just want you to do that for me. Yeah. That's, that's great. That says souls. That doesn't say just a building. That says souls. That says not just the community, but that says people will come, you know, just from all over and be a part of a, a well-planned, balanced diet program to know more about the love of Jesus. One of the keys and what we'll be doing tonight and the next 10 days is praying prophetically and releasing the prophetic. One of the key benefits of the prophetic is that it allows us to know a sense of God's divine timing and purpose. Amos 3 and 7 says that God does nothing in the earth until he reveals it to somebody, to his prophets, to his, to his servants, to give to you what God is saying. That's his order. That's what he does. And uh, he, was, he, he was trying to tell the people here that you could be around the church and you can be, know the knowledge of it, 
but you may not understand what God is doing in the earth at that given time. I want us to know what God is doing in the earth at this given time, 2016. To say, God, what do you want for us? What do you want for my family? What do you want for our children? Where are we going? What's our next? What's our next? What's our next? And, and as you acknowledge him, and if you discern that is the time changing, is, it, is are we supposed to be still and just wait? Or is it change? So you got to discern where you are. And every, every so often, because seasons change, you got to do that. Um, Ephesians uh, 1 and 10 uh, uh, tells us, Nine, and he made known to us the mystery of his will. How many want to be in the will of God? Yes. Yeah. And he made known to us, he'll make known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be, to be put into effect, to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. When we look at Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and it tells us there's a time and a season for everything, um, it's really saying to us pretty much, God calls a time, God calls a season. Now we're to get ready to engage. We're, get, we're getting ready to do our part. When he tells us, is it time to die? Is it time to live? Is it time to plan? It's time to, he's saying, okay, I'm telling you what the time is. Now engage. So you won't be lost. You know where I am. You know what I'm doing. So now, you know, all hands on board. You know, I've, I've, I've given the vision. Now it's time to be obedient to the heavenly vision and to the call of God. And so uh, when we think about that, it requires for us to embrace whatever the next is. And a lot of times it's change. A lot of times it's changed. It's, a lot of times it's beyond our scope of understanding and sometimes our, our, our scope of faith. And so, but God says, if I'm speaking it, if it's in my plan, if it's next on the calendar, embrace it. Amen. Stay with it. Stick with it. Yeah. Because there's something greater coming out of it that your eyes have not seen, yeah. that your ears have not heard, yeah. that's not entered into your hearts, but it's in my heart and you don't know what I got in my heart for you. Hallelujah. And so God is saying, you got to stay on board, stick with it, go for the ride all the way, the whole nine yards. Don't get weary in well-doing because in the due season, you shall reap if you don't faint not. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to him that endure to the end. Wait patiently on the Lord. And again, I say wait. He'll give you strength. He'll give you running power. He'll give you walking power. He'll renew your strength as eagles. Hallelujah. So if you get a little bit of weary, it's okay. If you get a little, you know, if you get a little just, just drained, it's okay. If you get a little bit discouraged, he's right there to renew your strength. And that's what he's doing today. He's renewing your strength today to let you know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Yeah. So joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. It's the promise of the Lord that cannot be taken away from you. Whatever God has promised you, he's going to deliver. Thank God he's not like a politician. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. You know, make promises, yeah, that he can't, take, he can't keep. If he said a thing, numbers said, if he said it, he'll make it good. Amen. He's a good, good father. That's who he is. Every promise. Every promise. But here's the thing. This is where we miss it. We, we, sometimes we miss the timing. And you got to admit, like I can admit today, that we've missed some opportunities. And we've missed some scheduled timings on God's calendar. Because, again, God's calendar doesn't change. And what's on his calendar for you is good. It may appear not to be good because he chastens whom he loves, but it's good. It's good. David say, yea, through I, though I walk through where? Of the of. But I won't fear no evil. There's some things you got to go through, people. You can't pray off. 
You can't fast off. You can't prophesy off. You can't get laid, hands laid on you. You just got to go through it. But the promise is I'll be with you. And I'll bring you through it. I'm talking to somebody about right in this area right now. I'm going to bring you through it. You're going through it, but I'm going to bring you through it. Hallelujah. And that's good news. And so he, he lets us know that the changes that even sometimes that we don't like, he still says, it's good. It's good. You don't see it now, but it's good. It, it'll work out. It's going to work together. You can't see it now, but it's good. It's looking real crazy now, but it's good. Trust me. Trust me. It's good. Come on. Some, you, somebody next to you need to be encouraged. Just pat him on the back. Say, it's good. Pat him. It's good. It's good. Trust him. It's good. Yeah. It's your season. If you're going through it, it's your season. If it's on you, you can bear it. Hallelujah. You can go through it. You can bear it because he's the one that caused these times and these seasons. Uh, so we can, you know, help do what he's called us to do. Now, after we, I'm going to just kind of switch over into this part. After we have understood the time and the season, um, you know, indicative of what's happening today. How many know it's time to pray for our country? I mean, really pray. I mean, really pray. Chronicles says, 7 to 14, if my people, not, not out there, but I mean, he said, y'all know who I, how I work? You got a track record with me? You know if you call upon me, I'll answer? You know if you ask, it shall be given. You know I've given you the power of agreement. You know if you come together in unity, one can put 1,000 a flight, but two can put 10,000 a flight. You know I have empowered you with power and authority to decree a thing, to declare a thing, to change a thing. That's who you are. He said, now, if you would get together and begin to pray, and cause a surge in the atmosphere. I mean a power surge. Yeah. Do I have any electricians in the room? Any electricians in the room? Any electricians in the room? You know, a power surge is when, when too much, everybody say too much. too much. Too much power comes through a, a little place that it's not supposed to all at one time. And when too much, too, I'm gonna say it again, too much power. Too much power comes through one little place. And when it's too much power, at the same time, it's an explosion. I mean, everything gets fried. Your computer gets fried. Your microwave gets fried. Everything on the other end gets fried. I say the body of Christ needs to come together with too much power from the east, the west, the north, the south, coming here and praying all of it I mean, at one time like they did for the walls of Jericho to fall. They were all in synchronization. Everybody had the same step. They had the same march. Nobody was doing this. Everybody hit it there, hit it, hit it, hit it, there, hit it, there, hit it, there, hit it. They hit it. Everybody did the same thing. And on the seventh day, because of unity, the walls fell. I'm telling the body of Christ everywhere is the it's time to discern. It's time for the power of unity. To discern it's time for us to do this thing, do this thing together. We are better together. And together we are better. Critical mass comes, and, and I tell you, when, when, when that, that power surge comes and you have that electrical blowout, everything goes out. It's time for us to eradicate sin, everything. Shut them down. Shut the enemy down. Close up his camps. Come on, somebody. I'm feeling pretty militant up here about right now. Hallelujah. Put your war clothes on and say, no, we're not having this. And so when we discern that this is that kind of time, now we got to go to Matthew 11th chapter when he says, when the kingdom of heaven, you know the rest of it, suffereth violence, the violent take it by force. Or when the kingdom of heaven fully begins to advance, it takes those men to, those, the, the, the forceful men to forcefully advance it and take a hold to it. So when the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, I'm telling you, in this day and time, we got to move from this little passive praying. 
We got to move from, Lord, I just need you. Would you please? We got we to gotta move to a violent faith. That's, where we, that's the discernment that we have to understand that as the intensity in the kingdom of darkness goes up, the intensity of the power of God goes up. Ain't nobody playing. Where sin abound, grace qualify that grace. As sins abound, grace much more abound. We're on top of this thing. We're not just meeting it head on head. No, we're on top of the enemy. We've got the most power. And so when, when, when we begin to look at what the kingdom of the enemy is doing, we have to move. We have to, we have to discern the times. So, okay, it's getting a little rough here. It's getting tight here. We're moving closer to the deadline, so we got to turn the volume up. we got to kind of put our prayers to a new level. And so I'm calling the church to violent prayer. I'm calling the church to the kind of prayer that says I, we will not be denied. We will not be denied the kind, of, uh, the kind of faith that says, it's my time. And God has said it. And God has said it. And let, let God be God and let God be true and every man be a lie. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. Amen. Yeah. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. And so it's the kind of violent faith that we, we come to church and we love it. And it was okay back in the day, but we're not back in the day. This is some real spiritual warfare for real, for real. <laughs> trying to not take only our children out, but trying to take our community out, our nation trying to go down. But we got to rise up as the church of Jesus Christ and say, we ain't having it. We're not having it. We are the people with the power. It's time to discern who we are and what God has given us. Hallelujah. He says we are the, his word is the highest form of authority. I know what the Congress is saying, the Senate is saying, and all the other stuff. But God's word is the highest form of authority in the land. He rules and he super rules. He's the governor over every nation. He's king of all kings. He's lord of all lords. And he has given us his space to occupy in the stead of his son. And it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to know, discern who we are. Did I need to do I need to tell you that we're from the tribe of the Lion of Judah? Do I need to tell you that of Jesus was from the tribe of the Lion of, Ju of Judah, that our eldest brother, well, he can't have it and we don't have it. So we've got that lion on the inside of us. We've, we've, we've got that strength on the inside of us. We've got that roar on the inside of us. We've got that violence on the inside of us. And God is saying, come on, church. I've called you to the front line. I need you now like I've never needed you before. Yes, I've blessed you. Yes, I've prospered you. Yes, I've given you your desire. But now is my time. It's time for my desire. And I've given you nations now. I need you to stand and defend this gospel. I need you to defend. I need you to contend, as Jude said, for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. I need you to, to, to contend for that kind of faith that once delivered the saints and that once was delivered to the saints. It's an overcoming faith that can overcome anything. That's what we got, people. That's who we are. And God is saying, I need you to have that kind of faith that will not be denied. And says, I will, I'll, I'll do whatever I have to do to see the, the, the purposes of God come forth. Four men carrying the paraplegic man in the second chapter of the book of Mark said, you know, we can't get him in the front door. We can't get him in the back door. We can't get him through the window. But you know what? I'm determined to see this man healed. I'm, I know if he can only, if Jesus can see him, if he can only get to Jesus, he's going to be healed. And it's my responsibility. I mean, it was four of them. It's, it's my job. We got to get him in there. That's my assignment. They found a way. They crawled up. They went on top of somebody else's house. What? Tore a hole in the roof of somebody else's house. That was violent faith. I mean, today you can get shot for that. 
I ain't talking about going to jail. I'm like, you can get shot for that. Intruder, bam. I'm talking about Jesus? No, oh, where is it? He will save you or resurrect you, but you're going down today. But you know what? They didn't care. They had one thing. They, they, they discerned that this is the only chance that this man can get to see Jesus because Jesus is always passing by. Come on, somebody. And so this is the only, this is the only chance that we got. And they were passionate about it, and they knew that that was their time to get this man healed. And they brought him down to the top of the roof. And then Jesus looked up, and the Bible said, translation by Judy Shaw, and he saw their action. And he saw their faith because violent faith turns into action. Violent faith begins to say, you know what? You're not doing this to me. I'm not taking this. Violent faith says, I'm angry. Church folks need to get angry. Not at your husband either. And not at your wives. And really not at the politicians. We need to get angry with the kingdom of darkness. We need to get angry with the perpetrator because we, we don't fight against flesh and blood. I don't care what their names are. We don't fight against man or one man. It's the principality that needs to come down. It's with the influence behind them because at any minute, watch this, watch, watch the Lord flip the script at any time. Both of them can get saved tomorrow. I mean, for real, for real. <laughs> I mean, not just saying I'm a Christian. I mean, I mean, Holy Ghost saved. Speaking in tongues saved. A real encounter with God. So it's not about the people, but it's about us coming. See, we know this. The politicians don't know this. This is our warfare. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mightily through God pulling down strongholds. We've got some strongholds to pull down this week, people. As we come together. If you cannot make it to the church, you get a room in your house. And you get your children together. And say, so we got to pray for our nation. Don't let that stop you. You get with your wife this week, the next 10 days. You get with your husband. Say, honey, we're going to dedicate this time. Seven to eight, we praying. Six in the morning, whatever time. You need to discern the time for your own life, for your own family, for your own country, for the sake of the kingdom. And say, there is a cause. We've got to stand up and we've got to do what God has called us to do. And we're it, people. We're saved. We're sanctified. We're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We're the people with the power. Do I have the right service? Okay. okay. Y'all it. I'm just telling y'all, you, you are it. And he's dependent on you. Let me quickly tell you that as you embrace what God is saying today, that, that, that we have to take it by force and how we do that. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 says we got to fight. Got to fight. You fight for everything else? You got to fight for this. Come on, somebody. You got to fight. He says fight the good fight of faith. Not just talk, but fight so we can lay hold to what God has given us. Yes. You are ordained to fight. Yes. Yeah, you are ordained to fight. You can fight. You have the right to fight Amen. because you're contending for the kingdom. There is a cause. Hallelujah. Amen. So our faith has to be qualified. It's, it's, it's the faith that's going to penetrate. It's the faith that's going to get the job done. It's called overcoming faith. The woman with the, issue of, with, the, with the issue of blood, she had overcoming faith because everybody else told her to stay away, stay away from Jesus. Eighth chapter of the book of Luke. They told her to stay away from Jesus. Bleeding, sick. She's sick. She has infirmity. All of those years she just been, couldn't stop the bleeding, but she pressed her way and she had that violent faith where it says, you're not going to stop me. I have to crawl. I'm going to see Jesus. And no matter what they were saying on the outside, how many know you got voices on the outside? 
Come on, somebody. You got voices on the outside. What you doing at that church? How come you giving? What you blah, blah, blah? Why are you hanging around those people? You got voices on the outside that say you can't make it. You shouldn't try it. Don't even try it. Look at everybody else that failed. That's not what God gave. Are you sure God gave it to you? You got to stand up boldly and say, yes, he gave it to me. And yes, I'm going to do it. Yes, yes, yes. What else do you want to know? I'm going all the way. And she pressed her way when they told her to stay away. And the Bible said that she said within herself. What are you saying within yourself today? She said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to push my way. They're going to get out of my way today. Nobody is stopping me today. Just don't, don't make me, don't make me say make my day today because you getting out the way today. She pressed away. And the Bible says when she touched the hem of his garment, she was made whole. Amen. Violent faith. Man, they brought him down from the, the rooftop. Jesus saw their faith be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. Violent faith. Ain't nobody playing. Not in this hour. Amen. Ain't nobody playing. We got too much at stake. Come on, people. The, 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 the woman with the issue, with, with the, 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 which one? The persistent women. The woman, the widow woman. The widow woman that said, Mr. Judge, 18th chapter of Luke, avenge me of my adversary. You got to help me. I, this, was, this was not right. I got a case, and you're the only one that can help me. She believed in what she was saying, and she was not going to let go. She believed. She believed. I believe. I believe. She did not only ask. The Bible says in Mark, uh, the 11th chapter, whatsoever you desire, ask, pray, believe, and, and. So you got to add receiving to your believing. And a lot of times we believe, but we don't go to the next step and just keep on until we, until we receive it. She believed it, and she wasn't going to stop until she received it and until she had it. And she worried that man, that judge, that she says, like, no, 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 I'm here, 12 o'clock at night. Hey, Mr. Judge, here I am again. You're you, you going to have to wake up because I am not going to stop pestering you until you take care. You're going to hear my case. You're going to hear my case. Bible said that the judge looked around and said, who is this woman that's getting on my last nerve? Who is this woman? Did you send her away? They said, no, Mr. Judge, she won't go away. Ooh, that a preach right there. She won't go away. If you keep falling, can I talk to, I work in a chemical detox, detox company uh, agency, Christian One, for 22 years, and one of the things I always tell my people, if you, keep, if you, if you fall, you just keep getting up. What the devil going to do with you if you just keep getting up? You just keep, you fell again. You know, it's part of the recovery. You fall, you get back up. He's right there. He's going to show you how faithful and how much he loves you. Every time you fall, you say, Daddy, pick, I need help. He'll pick you back up. He'll pick you back up. So, so if you are persistent, it's not, it's not God's persistency or his faithfulness. It's your persistency. It's not God. God's faithful. And so... That judge said, give that woman what she wants so she'll leave me alone. And the Bible said, when the Son of Man comes, what kind of faith will we find on the earth? That's you. I'm not asking you if that's you. I'm telling you, that's you. He's going to find that kind of faith in harvesting. He's going to find that kind of faith in your household. You're going to say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You're going to say, we're not trusting in chariots. We're not trusting in, e we're not going down to Egypt. We're not trusting in horses. We're trusting in the name of the Lord. And he will defend his anointed ones. And he will save his anointed ones. And as a matter of fact, he's sending help from the sanctuary right now. Help is on the way right now in Jesus' name. Today, I tell you that God wants you to move that kind of radical, violent faith so you can obtain the promise of God because the last day that we're living in the enemy is doing all he can let me close on this why does our faith have to move from just the kind of normal faith that we have you know get the little prayer and get the little laying hands on and listening to the word how come that we have to engage and go to a new level of intensity you know why can I tell you why say pastor Judy why, why? this is why because everybody has giants to kill before you get to your promised land. Every, everybody, everybody has giants before you get to your promised land. Everybody has a Red Sea to cross. You got a Jordan River you must cross. That's why you have to have that kind of tenacity and that kind of faith that says, you know what? This is what God says, and we're going to overcome. 
It's overcoming faith. Everybody say overcoming faith. A lot of our forefathers left here without overcoming. They did, Pastor Nick, they did great things. But their end was not their testimony from the beginning. Because they didn't have overcoming faith. There's some things that they didn't overcome. But they went on to be with the Lord. I'm saying to you that we have a faith that can overcome anything. Praise be unto God who's given us the victory. He's given us a triumph. He has overcome. And as he has overcome, we will, shall overcome. This is our faith, people. We're not weak. If we would discern the time of God and the season of God, that he's ready to show forth his glory as never before. You have overcoming faith. You have overcoming faith. I'm closing with this. There's somebody here today that has said, Pastor Judy, you know, I got it. I need to, I need to move. I need to turn the volume up. I need to, I need to step up in my faith. I, I've been doing good, but I see something greater that's coming for me. I've been feeling something, and I'm not sure what it is. And I'm telling you, it takes that next level of faith to obtain what you're feeling, what you're sensing and you're a knower, and you're like, ah, I'm not sure. I'm saying today that God has sent me here to release a, a out of this realm of supernatural faith that you need, this, this, even this fight and this grace that you need to go for and obtain and walk in this faith. And if you're bold enough to stand and say, I need that, I'm bold enough to open the heavens and cause a release to come upon your life in Jesus' name. Because that's what I do. That's what I do in Jesus' name. I speak to every businessman. I speak to every businesswoman. I speak to every father, every mother. I speak to you that have lost your way. You that have fallen off the wagon. You that have said, God, I've milked this level dry. And I, 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 I was here, but there's no more anointing on this level. There, there's no more resource on this level. I don't know what to do. I'm telling you today, the Lord is taking you up higher today on a new ram. And he's releasing a fresh grace and a fresh wind upon your life. And giving you some understanding to say, it's my time. And I'm going out for violent faith and the violent take it by force you got an inheritance Paul says woe unto me I got a debt to pay you got an inheritance to fight for in Jesus name I want everybody to raise your hand raise your hand everybody everybody if you can I want everybody to raise your hand raise your hand father Confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. I thank you that the word is not only letter, but it's spirit. I thank you, Lord, that the word is an ever-increasing word. I thank you that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Father, I've delivered your word. Now deliver your people. Father, I thank you for fresh grace that comes from your throne to give them the wherewithal, the strength, the tenacity to hold on and not let go. Father, I pray, God, for that determination. I pray, God, for that refocusing. And I pray that they would realign themselves of understanding that this is the time, this is the day of the Lord. Father, I call for an activation in the body of Christ right now. I call for a re-engagement. Some have just fallen back and have given up and have let discouragement come into their lives. But I say let God arise and the enemies be scattered. Father, I scatter disappointment. I scatter doubt. I scatter confusion. I scatter everything that tries to hinder your work and advance your people. I speak in the name of Jesus and say go in the name of Jesus. Father, release your love, your spirit, God your sound mind upon your people in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that they're going to leave out of this house, God, stronger, greater, more insightful than they've ever before, have ever had or ever done before. I release them to a new place in you today in Jesus' name. Open their eyes. Open their ears. Open their hearts and spirit. I thank you, Lord, that this word has not just fallen in the head, 
but the information in the head goes right to the heart because you said with the mouth we confess and with the heart we believe I thank you for this word going right into our hearts today and we believe from our heart that you are the risen Savior and you are our Lord in Jesus name now father cover this church like a blanket and release your love power grace and your spirit truth and wisdom like never before come on everybody just take it 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 take what's already yours <laughs>